Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ed Burrell, Creative Director for Privateer Press. I'm here to show you our exciting new Bodgers game, Bodger Mania. We'll take you through the basics of how to play the game. In Bodger Mania, you take on the role of a raucous goblin wrestler, battling your way through an entire season of no-holds-barred events. Proper training for each event is key, as having the right moves to unleash against your opponent will be critical in getting that 1-2-3 count. Bodger Mania has played over four rounds. The first three rounds represent the major events leading up to the ultimate event, Bodger Mania. During the first three rounds, players will battle in the ring for valuable prizes that will help them tip the scales in the Bodger Mania main event and walk away with the title belt to be declared the winner. Each game round is split into two main parts, a drafting game that is resolved in the training step and a trick-taking game that is resolved in the fight night step. The training step is where you work to scout out the competition and have the best moves for each of the four main matches of the event. During the drafting game, you draft cards to create your four-card hand for the trick-taking game. During the trick-taking game, you use those four cards to attempt to win the four tricks or matches and leave the competition bruised and on its back. During training, Bodger Mania uses drafting to represent the Bodgers preparing for their upcoming bouts. Drafting is the practice of taking turns choosing from a limited pool of options. Instead of simply drawing a hand of cards to start the game, you draft cards from your initial hand and then pass the remaining cards to the next player. After repeating this process several times, you have your final hand for the round, a hand you influenced with your draft choices. During fight nights, you play the cards from the hand you drafted to try to win the various tricks represented by the four match cards. Fight cards represent the various fighting styles and moves available to the Bodgers to use when battling for dominance in the ring. Each fight card has a number in the upper left and lower right hand corner, which represents its strength. In most matches, the higher the number, the more powerful the card. In addition to its value, each fight card also has a color which represents the fighting style it belongs to. There are four distinctive fighting styles available to the Bodgers. The heroic abilities of Lug, the sinister moves of Riggs, the flashy showmanship of Izzy, and the gravity-defying acrobatics of Puck. To set up the game, take the match cards and separate out the four cards with the correct number of players listed. Then arrange the match cards clockwise, starting with First Blood, then Bare Knuckle, then the Cage Match, and finally the Title Match. Shuffle the prize cards and place them face down in the center of the table to form the prize pile. Shuffle the fight cards and set them aside. The fight cards are the main deck for the game, and players will draw from this deck each round. The player who most thoroughly read the rulebook takes the ref's favor card, which allows that player to break ties during fight night, at least until another player catches the ref's eye. In Bodger Mania, the rings where each match takes place aren't all the same. Sometimes the highest card of the favored fighting style wins the trick, and sometimes it will get your face smashed into the mat. The highest card of the trump suit wins the first blood match, so eights and sevens are strong. In the bare knuckle match, the highest card of the trump suit still wins, but this match treats eights and sevens as if they were zeros. Now sixes or fives in the favored fighting style are the best cards. The lowest card of the favored fighting style wins in the cage match, so ones and twos are your best bet for taking the trick here. Victory in the title match goes to the player with the highest card of the favored fighting style, so eights and sevens are strong. At the start of a round, each player draws eight cards from the deck of fight cards. Each player drafts one card from his hand by placing it face down in front of him. Drafting does not occur in any particular order. Each player simply places a card face down once he has made his choice. Once all players have drafted a card, the player with the ref's favor card places a card from his hand face up beside one of the four match cards. This card is a vote for which fighting style should be trump suit at that match. Then the next player clockwise places a card from his hand face up beside any one of the four match cards, including the same match the last player chose. Continue until each player has placed one card. Players then simultaneously pass their remaining hand to the player seated clockwise from them. Repeat these steps until there are no cards remaining. At the end of the training step, each player will have four face down cards in front of him. These are the four moves available to him during fight night. To kick off the fight night step, First determine which fighting style is the trump for each of the four matches. Beginning with the first blood match, count the number of cards for each fighting style that were played to that match. The style that has the most cards is trump. Leave one card of the trump style beside the match card and discard the other fight cards. In the case of a tie, the fighting style that has the highest numbered card is trump. If there is still a tie, then no style is trump 
and you discard all cards from that match. There's also no trump style for any match where no one played any cards. With the trump determined for each match, it's time for the Bodgers to choose their best move from their hand of fight cards for each of the four matches. Each player places the four fight cards he drafted face down in a row on the table in the order of his choosing. From left to right, the first card will correspond with the first blood match, the second to the bare knuckle match, the third to the cage match, and the fourth to the title match. Once all players have organized their cards in front of them, the opening bell sounds and battle begins for first blood. Each player simultaneously reveals his card for each match, starting with the first blood match. The player with the highest card in the trump fighting style wins the match. If no one has a card in the trump style, or if there is no trump style, the highest card of any fighting style wins the match. In the case of a tie, the player with a ref's favor card chooses which tied player wins the match. The winner of the match leaves his card face up, and everyone else turns their card for the match face down. At the end of the fight night step, there should be four face up cards among the players, one for each match. Going in match order, the winner of each match draws the number of prize cards listed on the match card. Prize cards are used during the Bodger Mania main event round after fight cards are revealed for each match. Players can use their prize cards to modify the number and or color of the cards they played. This might change who wins the match. A prize card that has a plus or minus in the corner changes the current card by the amount listed, but has no effect on its color. A prize card that has a bodger head in the corner changes the current card to that bodger's color, but has no effect on its number value. For example, Work the Crowd adds two to a card's value, while Long Count subtracts one. Is he Famous turns a card blue, and Rigs the Match turns it green. After the prize cards for the event have been distributed, shuffle all the fight cards into a new fight card deck for the next round's training step. At the start of the turn, each player draws a hand of eight fight cards. For the first draft of the training step, I chose to draft Lugwrench 8 into my hand. Once Tony, DC, and Will have drafted their cards, voting begins to determine each match's trump fighting style. Voting begins with the current holder of the ref's favor card, which is Will. Will plays the makeover 4 to the cage match. I go next and play Lug Wrench 8 to the title match, as I want Trump to be orange to make the best use of my drafted Lug Wrench 8. Tony plays a Bling Bat 7 to the first blood match, and DC finishes the turn by voting Pain and Suffering 4 to the title match. Now that all players have drafted one card to their hand and played one card face up to vote for Trump, we pass our remaining hands to the left, and a new turn of drafting begins. After three more drafts, all the cards from our original eight cards have been either drafted into our hands or used to vote for each match's trump fighting style. Now we're ready for the fight night step. First, we count up the trump votes for each match. Blue wins first blood with two votes to purple's one. Orange, blue, and green are tied with two votes each at bare knuckle. However, the Bling Bat 7 has the highest value, giving Blue the trump. Blue also wins the cage match. Purple and Orange are tied for two votes each in the title match. In addition, both are tied for the highest value card, so there is no trump for the title match this time around. With the trump fighting style for each match determined, each player places his fight cards face down in the order he wishes to use them, starting with the first blood match and ending with the title match from left to right. DC wins the first blood match with a vicious bling bat to his opponent's face. Not only does his card have the highest value of any cards, it is also the favored fighting style of the match. As the winner of the first blood match, DC leaves his card face up and takes the ref's favor card from Will. Next up is the bare knuckle match. DC's quintuple flip moonsault has the highest value at six. However, my showstopper five beats his move even though it has a lower value because blue is trump for the match. In the cage match, the value of cards is flipped, with 1 being the highest value and 8 being the lowest. Both DC and Will are tied with the highest value of 1. However, Will's Walk of Pain beats DC's Morbid Shinhook due to the match's trump. Now Will takes the rest favor card back, giving him a potentially crucial advantage going into the title match. Will and I are tied for highest value, and with no trump card to put one of us over the other, it's up to the player with the rest favor card to break the tie. Unfortunately for me, Will won the rest favor card in the last match. Like the heel that he is, Will breaks the tie in his favor, edging me out of the title match win. 
With the title match over, it's time to claim our prizes. DC draws one prize for winning the first blood match, I draw one prize for winning the bare knuckle match, and Will draws four prizes, two for winning the cage match, and two for winning the title match. When you shuffle the fight cards for the fourth round of the game, it's time for the final round, the main event. Let's go back to our sample game where two more rounds have passed and the players have just finished the training step and have determined Trump for the fight step. The winner of the most matches here will earn the championship belt and walk away the victor of Bodgermania. With the fight cards revealed in the first blood match, everyone now has a chance to play a prize card they won in earlier rounds to modify their fight card. Players can play as many prize cards as they wish until all players have passed. For this match, every player but me chooses to play a prize card. Will plays Work the Crowd to bring his fight card value to an 8. Tony plays Lug Nuts to change the suit of his bling bat to orange. And DC plays Gremlin Enforcers to bring his card's value to 8. No one chooses to play any more prizes, as you can't use a prize card to go above an 8 or below a 1. Will, Tony, and DC are tied for the win in the first blood match. Normally, the player with the ref's favor would break the tie. However, the ref's favor is only used as a final tiebreaker at the end of the event. To begin the prize playing in the bare knuckle match, Will plays Gremlin Enforcers. I play Pucker Sunch to change my card to purple, Tony chooses to play nothing, and DC plays Long Count, which drops the value of his card from 7 to 6. Will then plays another Gremlin Enforcers. Playing one more Gremlin Enforcers brings his Margarita spill to a value of 6. Will, DC, and I have all tied and keep our cards face up. In the cage match round, no one chooses to play any prize cards. My Walk of Pain 2 beats Will's Steam Fist Sweep 1 because my card matches the trump. In the title match, Will plays Work the Crowd and Tony plays Pucker Sunch, while DC and I choose to play no prize cards. Will then flexes his muscles, playing another Work the Crowd and a Gremlin Enforcers, bringing the value of his fight card to 7, tying with Tony. Each player counts up the number of face-up fight cards in front of them. Will won three matches in the main event, while Tony, DC, and I each had two wins. Will is victorious and walks away the champion of Bodgermania. Now you're ready for the opening bell. Work on your best moves to pummel your rivals into submission, and you'll be on your way to become the Bodgermania champion. And for even more Bodgers action, check out Heap and Infernal Contraption on privateerpress.com.